there welcome or welcome back to uh, my channel the sweary sewist i'm nicole um it feels like it's been a while since my last video uh i haven't honestly had much to talk about um anything that i would have talked about would have just been a whinge and i didn't really want to do that so to i guess to put it mildly my day job has been very challenging the last couple of months i've lost a few team members i'm trying to replace three people at the same time and of course they're all in critical roles so um any gaps of, you know between employment is a problem and i end up having to pick up all the extra work so that's great so that that would have been one of my whinges but i'm not going to whinge about that because you know positivity maybe it's just time for a change a bit of a clean out um the other thing I would have whinged about, I've always got to have a whinge. My partner, I don't know if I've mentioned before, suffers, and I do mean suffers, um, bad gout. And he's just had such a bad uh, flare up of gout that he actually ended up in hospital. So that is, is that's, that's the story of my year. So that's the third hospital this year year that i've uh, spent hours and hours sitting around in we sat in emergency for nine hours waiting for him to be seen was it nine hours no no it was six hours it was nine hours by the time i left the hospital and drove home in the middle of the night um it's a shit fight i you know we just had regrets that we even went to the hospital we just we oh, we were sent to the hospital by a nurse and when we were about halfway to the hospital, we were kind of going, should we even go? Do we just go home? Do we go back tomorrow? Like, this is just going to be, you know, this is going to be hours and hours of waiting around. Do we just do it tomorrow? But we went um, because they were talking. They didn't know at that stage that it was a flare-up of gout. They were talking septic joints. They were talking DVTs, um, all these other possibilities, and that's why they sent us to the hospital. So that was... Um, that was a fun week. Um, so what else? So I have been doing, surprise, surprise, more market prep. Um, um, I seem to always be doing market prep, but <laughs> not doing many markets. I did do a different market last weekend. One I haven't done before is a Christmas in July theme. I will put in a little bit of footage um, after this i did take some photos of some of my stock as well so i'll put that in so i i sort of slapped together some christmas themed stuff you know sticking with the theme i just thought it was more than anything it was just to add that color and bring the christmas cheer to my store more than you know i didn't actually expect to sell christmasy stuff i sold half of the christmas stock that i took so that's it i was pleasantly surprised that's really good but that's maybe a sign that it's actually it's not too early to start doing the christmas stuff so i think i might do um more maybe not for the next market but uh because where are we it's july now so next market's august probably push the father's day theme in the next markets and then maybe start to look towards christmas so the next market is an outdoor market i haven't done an outdoor market since I oh, know it was summer. It's the one I did at the pub. I think I took you there. So um, I don't know if it's warm enough yet, but we'll find out, won't we? We actually have one day next week. The temperature forecast is 16 degrees, which is fake spring. Anyone who lives in the Canberra region knows that you get at least one fake spring. Everybody gets excited and then it's back to, you know, minus five the next week it is a shitty shitty day today you can't tell because i've got the light on there but it is 2 30 in the afternoon and it feels like it's getting dark so it, we're actually past the solstice it, it, the days are getting longer but then you get a day like this and it's it, honestly it's just been crappy from start to finish i've got a line full of washing i don't think i'll get it in because i don't think it's dry and it's going to rain tomorrow so i don't know um hang it all up inside um the other thing so today i've doing been doing more work more of my emergency poo packs which is still my best seller um still selling at every market through etsy etc so that's really good um and i'm about to do a, a um, pet version of the same thing uh, so i'll show you that when they're done i bought myself a toy 
I've been looking at these. Uh, they first came out just in the US a couple of years ago. It's an um, embroidery alignment laser. Now, I had to have one when they were only out in the US. They didn't have the right power supply. I don't even know if this one has the right power supply, to be honest. I haven't looked. Um, I'll be a bit annoyed if it doesn't. I actually don't know how it's powered, but we'll find out. I had to have one, and now that I have one, I can't remember how they're used, so I'm going to have to YouTube that. Um, the other thing I'm going to do in this video is give you a wee tour of my sewing room. It won't be particularly detailed. I don't love the videos where, you know, you go in and out of every drawer. Um, I love to see other people's sewing rooms, but I don't, I, I guess I just don't have the attention span to see what's in every drawer. So, uh, I know some people love that, but that's not for me. Welcome to my sewing room. This is the ugly green door, which leads through from my partner's side of what we affectionately call the shed into the sewing room. So we're coming through this door. You can come in through the window if you want, but that's not the easiest option. Into the sewing room. So there's a change of color straight away. Uh, the other half of the room has got hessian lined walls. So at least I have Proper lined walls. Um, okay, quick tour. Like I said, not overly detailed. That's uh, that's not really what I'm about. So as you come through the door, well, that's my brag wall straight up. So um, I have entered a few local shows. I think I've mentioned this um, in other videos. That's my brag wall. I used to only enter the Canberra show. Now I enter some of the regional shows as well. So. Um, I'm a big fan of Ikea. So starting down here, we've got one of those little trolleys. I can't for the life of me remember what they're called. But anyway, that one's in a fairly untidy state. But I've got the little buckets on the front that hold my um, cutting bits and bobs, marking tools, um, yeah, clips. I think my rotary cutter blades are in there somewhere. Um, that dirty cloth is probably not meant to be right there but anyway uh, bobbins underneath there bits and bobs and my color wheel which I refer to surprisingly often and then underneath yeah it's just stuff underneath garbage bags works in progress whatever so these are my semi-retired embroidery machines uh, at the back is my Janome 350E and at the front is my Memorycraft 10001. They're both here as backups. I probably should sell one of them, but I'm very emotionally attached to my machines, so I I don't tend to <laughs> I don't tend to move them on. Um okay, coming down here, IKEA Alex drawers, every sewing room has them. Sorry, camera a bit shaky because I've got really sore muscles. Uh I will show you briefly what's uh, actually the top two are just stationary so we won't go in there this is part of my thread collection here machine embroidery threads king star this is what i used to use exclusively but i don't anymore because the postage on them is actually too expensive compared to buying other brands because there's just one supplier there's a couple of rolls of fufus in there which i love i think fufus is actually one of the best quality threads on the market 
Um, more down here. Again, another big roll of Fifi's, some sweet pea threads, some Janome threads, and a pack of Madeira thread in a particular colour. Let's see if I can pick up the colour. Which I've always wanted to do some embroidery on a christening gown in that colour. So I've, I reckon I've had that for 15 years. Anyway, it's a someday project. Now it won't go back in the drawer. This drawer needs a tidy up. I Sometimes when I'm working fast, I slam drawers and things fall over. And then in the bottom, overlocker threads, a bit more organised by colour. Um, yep, pretty boring really. That's the Alex drawers. So then we come across to work central this is where it all happens this is where the magic happens my janome memory craft 6500p absolute workhorse had her for 21 years this year and she's never missed a beat the only thing that's ever gone wrong with that machine is the thread cutter got damaged and that was entirely my fault so i was overzealous in pulling something off the machine while it was still cutting, jammed it, had to get my favourite mechanic to fix it. Back here is, she's a dead marine, this one. <laughs> a beautiful old singer that d didn't function, doesn't work. It was in someone's rubbish pile. I took it and had it powder coated just purely for decoration for my sewing room. Um, the advantages of having a friend who does powder coating. Powder coating. As you can see, I use a lot of lights. I have four lights pointed at the sewing machine. I'm blind as a bat. I have another light on the overlocker. Um, yep. Again, Janome 644D. And then coming over here, this is where most of my storage is. Quick flash up here. There's family photos, boxes stored. You name it. These shelves are so ugly. But anyway, they're utilitarian. They hold shit. That's what shelves are meant to do. Um, This is where I have my little ironing board. I do have a full-size ironing board in the house if I want to use it. Don't use it very often. I don't iron clothes. <laughs> don't judge me. Um, And down here is where I keep, you know, all your usual bits and bobs and notions. I do keep my fabric, I don't keep a lot of fabric, and what I do keep is in plastic tubs because, as I've mentioned before, we have issues with mice. And there was a big fat one in the kitchen earlier today, so I'll have to go and get some more baits. Um, I have a cam press over here. Lots of people have a cam press. There's a green. I had mine powder coated, so it's purple. Then you come around this side, and you got the Cricut. And all the bits and bobs, all the toys, mug press, hat press, flat press, mini press, you name it. It's there. Those uh, little drawers. This is the cabinet from Spotlight. I can't remember what it's called, but um, it does the job. Holds all the vinyls and whatever. And then this is where, this is my corner of shame. My beautiful treadle in the corner completely buried under crap so this is all supplies for market making stuff spare tea towels embroidery hoops um, a couple of boxes that i use for shipping out i also do personalized towels i think you've seen some of those so yeah this is definitely the corner of shame this basket here is full of smocking projects i've i learned to smock in high school and um i love doing it 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 passes time, you know, not that it passes time. It's a good use of time when you're just sitting in front of the television. So I'm going to go back to doing more smocking, I think. Um, more storage up here. The stuff I use for packing and shipping is on these shelves. Again, more spare stuff for, uh, I've got key fob hardware and poop pack hardware up there. Blank stubby coolers all sorts of stuff camera equipment up there my christmas decorations that don't go with my house but I, there's no way i'm getting rid of them are in there i recently sorted out my life all this stuff up here was in 
manky cardboard boxes. So put it in Ikea tubs. Of course it's Ikea. And labeled everything. Um, this is my, some of my book collection. Sewing related magazines and my mum and my nan's sewing boxes are there pretty much untouched. I got them both from my mum and haven't touched any of it. So in the corner, I have a couple of AO patterns, but that's rolls of, uh, I think there's a roll of shape roll interfacing, some bag vinyls. I've got a completed cross stitch in a tube there. Like I say, it's part of the corner of shame. So let's not dwell on that. Let's move on. Behind this heater here is a Ikea Kallax. Bottom is just some bits and pieces of kind of scrap fusible fleece and things like that. The top drawers are my patterns. They used to be really well organized. I used to have adults on one side and kids on the other side, but now it's just a mashup. And I just slot them in on top because I'm too lazy to care. I don't sew with a lot of patterns anymore. Come around here, got my desk, which is also Ikea, Ikea chair, my purple Mac, um, pop quiz, does anyone know what my favorite color is? <laughs> Another Ikea trolley over here, and this is my uh, Janome, the current embroidery machine that I use, you've seen this in action, my 5500E. This is a great machine. I think I've had it maybe two years little COVID gift to myself I think it was um, also doesn't miss a beat takes a lot of oil but it doesn't miss a beat uh, under there I've got the stuff I use for when I work at home so that's pretty boring and then over to my cutting table so this is a horn cutting table um, I've had, is I think it's also 21 years I've had it. I've dragged it through many, many houses. I've thrown out all my other sewing furniture. Uh, when my marriage broke down, I, I basically lost the whole contents of my sewing room, but I managed to hang on to this. So I painted the handles purple in a surprise move. Um, so it goes with the rest of my room. The These little shelf units are also from... You guessed it, Ikea. Just keep a few extra things handy for some of the stuff that I do on my cutting table. Use all the ribbons when I'm packing my poo packs, uh, packing tape, etc. This is where I pack. And then, yeah, over there I've got my rotary cutter scissors that I use kind of the most frequently. Shadow box on the wall was my grandfather's. And my dressmaker poster that my partner made for me. Um, and that brings us back to the start. So I'll just back up so you can see the whole room. Yes, I do have the highly coveted IKEA button rug. It's, what was I thinking? It is so hard to keep clean. You know, it's, um, I do live in a semi-rural area. My house is not surrounded by concrete. I have gravel footpaths, have a lot of grass, so it's constantly filthy. I did recently get it cleaned by my lovely friend, Joe, who owns a rug spa. Um, I'd be embarrassed if he saw it again now. But anyway, that's the sewing room. So thank you for watching. Sorry if it's boring. And if you have any questions about it, pop them in the comments. So I've realized I missed this trolley here, um, which is another of the little Ikea trolleys. And this is where I keep the rest of my thread collection. So I now use more Hemingworth. These are the threads that I use for my poopack embroidery. So they're just there in easy reach. Um, things get a bit out of control and not everything gets put away. But I use these with the cutting board top to keep the dust and light off. So that's some of the threads. And then down here there are more. If I can get that out of there. These were, I'm using these to make a quilt.
more colors. So I do have a little bit of an addiction to embroidery thread, but I, I don't think it's an issue. It's under control. Um, I showed you this box when I got it from the craft show a few weeks ago. And under there is just more um, machine embroidery related stuff. So placement, templates, uh, some clips and cleaning for cleaning stuff for my embroidery machine. And then all of my stabilizers hang on the end here. That's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Um, thanks for making it all the way to the end. It's a bit of a short one, but like I said, not much happening except stuff to whinge about. Um, I am going to end this video on a slightly serious note. Uh, two weeks ago, my cousin Christina, who is the exact same age as me, sadly passed away after a battle with bowel cancer. Christina's, or Chris, as she was known to us, Chris's one wish was that people would um, learn from her passing and look after themselves and if you're in Australia you if you're over a certain age and I think that age is 45 you receive a bowel cancer screening kit in the mail Chris's wish was that you don't throw it in a drawer or put it in the bin use it it might save your life so um Chris was um one of a kind she was spirited she was lively she would have been described as a child as hyperactive she was very sporty she was very active she was great fun she always had a smile on her face and um she will be missed so please look after your health do the right things whether or not you have symptoms when you receive that test please use it um, and uh, take care of yourselves have a great day and thanks again for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.